Hello, it's another edition of Plus Reports, a compilation of the stories and events that made the news recently. I'm Jacinta Obiuku. Ahead of the commencement of the continuous voter registration on Monday, June 28, the Independent National Electric Commission had said the exercise will x-ray the dead and the underage, and those found voting may face five-year jail terms. Resident Electric Commission in Akwaibo, Mike Igini, dropped this hint on our breakfast show. Destiny Momo has more. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it will deploy 5,346 personnel to 2,673 registration centers for continuous voter registration, CVR. And the commission is therefore migrating to the INEC voter enrollment device, IFED, which is based on an Android tablet. The resident commissioner for Akwaibom State, Mikey Guinea, says for a start, 774 enrollment devices will be distributed to all local governments and one other in each state, making it 811 IVED machine. For those who are doing transfer, those who are complaining about defaced or lost BBC, you already, we already have your data in the system. It will confirm that. The commissioner also spoke on how INEC intends to capture the registration process for fresh registration, lost permanent voter card, PVC, and cases of transfer, given that the 2023 election is closed. 774 uh, local governments. You are going to have each of these in those areas. All right. Then at the state level, the, the biometric capture is also taking place in the head office of each of the states. So that is the certain point. On security, Guinness says it is not INEC's job to provide security, but they will consider the best options, stressing that a five-year jail term awaits the falters of underage and dead people's registration. Registering even both living and dead people who are not absent, in any case, the system itself, uh, the beauty of this particular uh, system where the IVED we are using, is that the offense for that, it could attract to five years in prison and a minimum of one year. INEC Chairman Professor Yakubu says the CVR exercise will be carried out continuously for over a year until the third quarter of 2022. Destiny Momo for PLUS TV Africa. INEC also said it will prosecute any citizen who provided false information during the continuous voter registration as offenders would be prosecuted under the nation's Cybercrime Act 2015. Now, the Lagos state government has expressed its intention to take up projects that will help develop smaller and remote uh, communities in the state. Secretary to the state government said this at the inauguration of the rehabilitated facilities of the Okogun Odofin Community Primary School, which will improve the learning and teaching environment. Plus TV, Africa's correspondent at Debanke Odunui has mourned this. The Lagos State Government, under its initiative, One Community at the Time, OCAT, has rehabilitated and commissioned the Okegun Odofin Community Primary School. Speaking to newsmen, Secretary to the State Government, Fola Shade Jadri, said the need to build the future of the children of the state was the reason why the administration of Babajide Sonwolu placed importance on education. Other achievements of the initiative were also mentioned. The administration is, has the themes agenda, and I'm sure you will know, and education is one of them. And you know that education is, is the foundation, the bedrock for development in any society. If the people, if the children are not educated, you know, there's no way we can have the, the kind of development that we desire. We've just renovated a school in Ego. School one and school two in Ego. And work is still going on there 
In addition, we've just built a new public park in uh, Ijeododo, and another project is going on in Akpa in Badagri. The issue of fencing of schools in the state was emphasized. One of our biggest challenges in our public primary school have been the issue of fencing. That is so important for many reasons. Number one, for the security of our children, child protection. Number two, it's also the matter of encroachment. We have witnessed many of our school facilities that have been taken over by developers, by people in communities. They just, you know, with total disregard to the law, build housings and other things on school facilities and school compound before you know it. While immense appreciation was offered to the Lagos state government, a traditional leader expressed the need for a police station around the community. And we are grateful to, for the governor because all along things have not been going well. That's why we are in a small community. And I thank God for what the governor has done for us today. But we still need something like police station in this community because of the, all this um, bad attitude in the, in the ASIS. The initiative hopes to work on other communities in the future. Reporting for Plus TV Africa, Adebanke Udunui. Well, such a good development by the state government as an investment in education is expected to yield positive results through improvement in students' performance in examinations, national and international competitions, as well as improved morals, etiquette and confidence in public speaking. Lagos State Governor Babaji Desongulu said his administration would continue to listen to the citizens in order to provide for their needs, protect life and property. Songulu put smiles on the faces of some vulnerable residents. 50 residents got aid from the state at the third edition of the Songulu Listens Initiative. The program was conducted by the Office of Civic Engagement. The scheme is designed to provide long-term financial assistance to vulnerable citizens in Lagos State. It is one of the social intervention programs implemented by the Lagos State Government to bring economic and humanitarian relief to residents. Governor Babajide Sonwolu is represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Folashade Jaji. She says the state is concerned not only about economic well-being, but also the health of the people. It's an initiative of uh, Mr. Governor, um, uh, Mr. Baba Jide Olushola Sanwolu, and it's been run through the Office of Civic Engagement. Make them to be self-employed -empl rather than you know, looking for jobs, and they're able to make money and uh, you know, contribute to the economic growth of the, of the state. Governor Sonwolu's special advisor on the Office of Civic Engagement, Adirami Adebowale, urges residents of Lagos to pay their taxes regularly so that this program will continue. I'm going to employ all Lagosians, all our citizens, to please try as much as possible if you are a blue-collar worker in the, former in the former sector, in the informal sector, if you are selling bully on the street, if you are selling pure water, if you are in the markets, Please pay to the Lagos State coffers so that we can continue to bring support to our vulnerable people's lives in Lagos State. Some beneficiaries are presented with checks, while others receive other services, like the renovation of their homes with falling roofs. Surprisingly, I'm here. Despite not being from Lagos State, though resident in Lagos, I'm an Igbo person. I was, called, I was listed as one of the beneficiaries. I think it's a great move. Is a positive move, is a feel of governance where your governor actually feels for you and reach out to you. So great and happy because I didn't expect this. I put in my application last month, precisely May 6, and within a month, I, I, I'm able to be one of the beneficiaries. It's a great benefit for me. Government Lagos State give me five hundred thousand today, and by wish I automatic wish I. What, what they give me is more than money, because they renovated my house and they furnished it for me. Fifty people, including the physically challenged, the sick, widows and parents of sick children, artisans, drivers, and the aged, 
are among the beneficiaries of the third edition of the program. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. The responsibility of the government should go beyond protection of life and property of its citizens, but also to provide for the needs of vulnerable among them. Now, as the world marked the day of the seafarer, the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency in Nemasa gathered seamen to celebrate, but some of them had complaints. Ngozi Kaohai Jesse has more. 25th June is a day set aside to celebrate seafarers around the world. Nigeria is joining the world to celebrate and appreciate seafarers for their handwork with the theme, Fair Future for Seafarers. Bashu Yusuf Jamo, the Director General of NIMASA, shares his welcome address. The last year's event took place during the thick of pandemic and the seafarers decided to sacrifice their life and well-being. While everybody was at home, we were asked to remain at home. These brave ladies and gentlemen, they continued to move around the world to ensure the issue of medicine and other essentials didn't suffer. Goodwill messages are said in appreciation of the seafarers who work in extremely hazardous conditions. Seafarers, I congratulate you once again and wish you happy Seafarers Day. Um, you are greatly appreciated and we will as always strive very hard to do our best um, to ensure that you can all grow individually, collectively and as a nation. They are able to cut for their well-being and that of their families, especially because most times they are out of their, their families. So, let them know that we recognize the contribution they make to the economy and we're not going to let them down. A panel set up to discuss the challenges and future of seafaring gets down to business. Oil and gas that we all use are also moved by these same seafarers. The gas that you use in cooking, when you stay at home, you use your generators, you use your power, you use the gas that you use in cooking, are all moved by seafarers. How do we attract seafarers and create a fair future for them? First of all, they must follow the, we must let them follow the pay. The pay has to be good. And um, in uh, Swan, Ship Owners Association of Nigeria, even though we have limited, we have our limitations, we do the best to try to pay them well, pay them on time. The celebration turns rowdy as Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria calls on Nimasa to take responsibility as seafarers are suffering. The seafarers are not happy. We should be frank with you, sir. Fine, the master is doing their best. I saw the minister greeting seafarer, the junior minister greeting seafarer. Sir, talk is cheap. Things later calm down and the director general of NIMASA congratulates seafarers and encourages them to continue with the hard work they put in. For Plus TV Africa, Ngozika Ohai Chesi. Seafarers are arguably the strongest link in the maritime value chain in an industry that accounts for over 65% of world trade. So their welfare should be of utmost importance to Nimasa. You're watching Plus Reports. There is more after this break. <laughs> 